Hello, you're welcome to Medical Sciences by Naftali Muhumza. And today we want to focus on beta oxidation. Beta oxidation is part of the fate of free fatty acids. So if you, were, you haven't watched on the video on digestion, absorption, and metabolism, or utilization of lipids, please first watch that. This one we want to focus on the fate of free fatty acids. How are they utilized by the body? How does the body utilize free fatty acids to get energy? So on the beta oxidation, the first step we talk about is free fatty acid activation. The first step, it begins how to utilize the free fatty acids in the body. We need to first activate free fatty acid. And that process is what we call fatty acid activation. So the first step is fatty acid activation, free fatty acid activation. And this process involves the, we need ATP, we need energy in the form of ATP, whereby we are going to get free fatty acids, free fatty acids, then we activate them to acyl, or what we call fatty acyl CoA, fatty acyl CoA. And this first stage in the free fatty acids activation, it begins in the cytosol, or it occurs in the cytosol of the liver. As I told you in the beginning, that when the free fatty acids are formed, they are transported, bound to albumin, and taken to the liver cells. And when they reach in the liver cells, we see free fatty acids undergoing activation in the presence of ATP. Whereby, when we have free fatty acids, they are being converted to fatty acyl CoA. And this fatty acyl CoA is formed in the presence of ATP, whereby ATP is hydrolyzed to AMP, that is adenosine monophosphate. Adenosine monophosphate and we produce a pyrophosphate. So we are seeing ATP being hydrolyzed directly to a monophosphate with the production of a pyrophosphate, which is a high energy compound equal to like utilization of two ATPs. And this reaction occurs in the presence of an enzyme, and this enzyme is known as acyl-CoA acyl -CoA synthetase. synthetase. So the enzyme acyl-CoA synthetase is the one that is getting two phosphate groups from ATP, adding them on free fatty acids to form fatty acyl CoA. This is the first step in the beta oxidation and it occurs in the cytosol. This reaction occurs in the cytosol of the liver cells. Occurs in the cytosol of liver hepatocytes. That is step number one under beta oxidation. The second step, we need to transfer this activated fatty acyl CoA from the cytosol into the mitochondria. And how does it occur? That after forming fatty acyl CoA, or what you can call acyl CoA, which is an activated form of free fatty acids, we need to transfer it into the mitochondria. And this drawing represents, this lining is just the inner mitochondrial membrane, whereby this is the cytosolic side and this is the matrix side. So this is inside the mitochondria and this is outside the mitochondria. So what happens, the fatty acyl CoA formed in the cytosol combines with the carnitine. So the acyl CoA which have, we have been formed in the step one combines with carnitine and this carnitine in the presence of CAT1 we form acyl carnitine. This CAT1 is in full, it is carnitine acyl transferase type 1. You can call it carnitine, carnitine 
Asayur Fansifales type 1 Fansifales type 1 That is cut 1 So whenever we have Carnitine acyl transferase type 1, it combines acyl CoA together with the carnitine to form acyl CoA. As I continue, I remind my dear people who are watching me there to always subscribe to this channel. Always share your comments and like the video. Your comments are always highly welcome. So as we continue, we are seeing enzyme CAT1, carnitine acyl transferase type 1 combining two compounds that is acyl coa together with the carnitine to form acyl carnitine and we cleave off the coa that's how we form the acyl carnitine and this acyl carnitine formed in the cytosol now we need to transfer it into the mitochondria because we know beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondria so we are going to transfer acyl carnitine, which we have formed into the mitochondria. And how do we do it? We need an enzyme known as transrocase. This is known as transrocase enzyme. And this transrocase, as its name suggests, is going to transfer acyl carnitine from the cytosol side of the mitochondria and it enters it into the matrix side of the mitochondria. So we shall have our acyl carnitine in the mitochondrial matrix. And this process of transferring acyl carnitine from the cytosol side to the matrix side of the mitochondria, the enzyme that catalyzes this transfer is known as transilocase enzyme. And once we deliver acyl, acyl carnitine in the mitochondria, we need the carnitine to go back and bring more activated acyl CoA. So we shall see another enzyme called CAT1, CAT2. This is carnitine acyl transferase type 2 is going to convert back to cleave, whereby it will cleave off the carnitine. It is going to, in the presence of CAT2, CAT we are going to see can forming acyl CoA shall form acyl CoA, then we cleave off the carnitine. We cleave off the carnitine. Carnitine. Because carnitine, we need to take it back to the cytosolic side to get more acyl CoA entering into the mitochondria. So we have an enzyme in the in the matrix, in the mitochondrial matrix, known as carnitine acyl transferase type 2. This was type 1 and this is type 2. And it is this type 2 that is cleaving off the acyl CoA, the acyl carnitine, forming acyl CoA and carnitine. And we see it involves this CAT2 adds CoA. It adds coenzyme A and this addition of coenzyme A, it cleaves off the carnitine and that's how we are producing acyl in the mitochondrial matrix. Then the, the, the carnitine, which is cleaved off in the mitochondrial, is taken back. Still the same transrocase enzyme takes back the carnitine into the cytosol. So it takes back the carnitine so that this carnitine can combine with more acyl coin. That is how we do it. So we have seen the reaction after entry of acyl carnitine by transrocase enzyme. This transrocase enzyme, when it reaches in the matrix, we see cleavage of carnitine from acyl coupled with addition of coenzyme A. In the presence of enzyme known as carnitine acyl transferase type 2. And when this one happens, we form acyl CoA and the carnitine is cleaved off. And the carnitine which is cleaved off is taken back to the cytosol to bring more acyl CoA. That is the reaction number two. 
after bringing the acyl CoA, what you can call fatty acyl coenzyme A in the mitochondrial matrix. Now we are going to see four reactions happen. And these four reactions which are going to happen, they're happening all of them in the mitochondrial matrix. And these reactions include oxidation reaction, hydration reaction, then oxidation, and lastly, cleavage. So now this is the acyl CoA, which we have delivered in the mitochondrial matrix. So this acyl CoA, which is in the mitochondrial matrix, what we are going to, what happens, it undergoes oxidation, it undergoes oxidation to form trans coa and this oxidation occurs in the presence of FAD, whereby when we have FAD, we are going to form FAD, reduced FAD. We form reduced FAD, and this reaction of oxidation occurs in the presence of enzyme known as a dehydrogenase. I don't want to tell you, my viewers, whenever you see NAD involved, think of a dehydrogenase enzyme. So this enzyme is going to be a dehydrogenase, and the dehydrogenases are named according to the substrate they are catalyzing. So here, the name of the enzyme is known as acyl-CoA synthetase, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme. So acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme is the one that is catalyzing the oxidation of acyl-CoA to enoyl-CoA. So we are converting acyl-CoA to trans enoyl coa Because this one has the inner group in it, that's why we are calling it enoyl coa And that reaction is called oxidation reaction. <laughs> after we have formed the enoyl coa after the reaction by acyl-CoA dehydrogenase in the presence of FAD, forming reduced FAD, we now see addition of water which we are calling the reaction as hydration. So in trans coa we are going to come and add water. <coughs> Excuse me. So here we involve this addition of water, whereby we add water in this reaction. And this water is going to, to provide a hydroxyl group. This hydroxyl group on beta carbon is going to be provided by water. Maybe what I can tell you that in namings, this one is known as, the carbon from the functional group is known as alpha carbon, and this is beta carbon. And during the beta oxidation, we call it beta oxidation because the reactions are occurring on the beta carbon. So here still, this is alpha carbon, this is beta carbon. So we are going to see the hydroxyl group from water being added to the beta carbon of the enoyl coa And when we add it to a beta carbon, we form beta hydroxy acyl coa And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction on the beta carbon is known as enoyl coa hydratase. The enzyme is known as enoyl coa hydratase. So we are seeing enoyl-CoA hydratase adding the hydroxyl group at the beta carbon of enoyl-CoA to form a beta hydroxy acyl-CoA. That is the second reaction. Then after forming beta hydroxy acyl-CoA, we see another oxidation reaction, which is reaction number three, whereby we are going to oxidize the beta carbon to form another keto group. So we are going to form a keto group. And this reaction, for it, the first one involved the NAD, this one involves the NAD. NAD plus, and this NAD is going to be reduced to NADH. And this, and I told you, whenever you see NAD and FAD, think of the dehydrogenase enzyme. And the dehydrogenases, they are named according to the substrates they are catalyzing. So we see on the beta carbon, on the hydroxyl group, we are going to remove, as you know that oxidation is removal of hydrogen. So we are going to remove hydrogen 
on the beta hydroxy on the beta carbon having the hydroxyl group and we form a keto group on the beta carbon this one being a beta carbon we form there a keto group and this one occurs in the presence of enzyme known as beta hydroxy beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase so beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase enzyme is the one that is removing the hydrogen from the hydroxyl group on the beta carbon and we are able to form a keto function group hence the product which is formed that's why we call it keto acyl coa because we have formed another keto group at the beta carbon so that is reaction number 3 which is oxidation which involves NAD plus an enzyme known as beta hydroxy acyl coa dehydrogenase then the last reaction the aim of forming this second keto group is that we want to get a molecular scissor <coughs> and this molecular scissor is the one that is going to help us to form to cleave this keto acyl coa so we are going to see a molecular scissor known as the thiolase enzyme this thiolase or thiolase enzyme is a molecular scissor which comes and cuts this keto acyl coa here it cuts to form acetyl coa and fatty acyl coa so we see that's why we call it cleavage reaction cleavage and this cleavage or cutting is done by thiolase enzyme thiolase goes as you know that this is alpha carbon this is the beta carbon it goes in between the alpha and the beta and it breaks the bond to form two compounds that is acetyl coa and acyl coa and this acyl coa formed goes back and it enters into another cycle then the acetyl coa which is produced in the mitochondria is the major product of beta oxidation the major product of beta oxidation is acetyl coa and this acetyl coa is the one that is used to do many metabolic processes especially during fasting or starvation we are going to see that this acetyl coa produced during beta oxidation can be utilized in different ways and how can we utilize this acetyl coa in different ways and you allow me to zoom it this side maybe i can write here that this acetyl coa formed can be taken in the presence of oxygen in the mitochondria can be can be taken into krebs cycle and within the krebs cycle in the mitochondria we call we, we are able to form atp that is in form of energy in form of atp water and carbon dioxide so that is one set of acetyl coa produced as you know that acetyl coa is a two carbon it is a two carbon compound it can be fed into krebs cycle in case the body is lacking energy to those cells that have the mitochondria can you utilize it in krebs cycle or what we call tricarboxylic cycle to form atp water and carbon dioxide and in case the demand is too much to the cells which lack mitochondria or which cannot utilize which you cannot carry out to krebs cycle and there is little oxalo acid they are channeled into ketogenesis so we see this acetyl coa another option it can be used to produce ketone bodies by the process known as ketogenesis it undergoes the ketogenesis and we are able to form to produce ketone bodies ketone bodies include acetone acetoacetate aceto acetate and beta hydroxybutyrate we see ketone bodies like acetone acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate are produced by the process known as ketogenesis and that one only normally occurs during starvation during starvation and uncontrolled diabetes mellitus we can see acetyl coa 
being used under ketogenesis to produce ketone bodies which brain cells can use to get energy because we know brain lack mitochondria so they cannot utilize acetylcholine in form of Krebs cycle so they do ketone bodies and these ketone bodies especially acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate can be used to provide energy for the brain and we know that that's why you see diabetic people always produce a fruit smell because this acetone is volatile it can go into the lungs and excrete in the respiration another process we can use for this acetyl-CoA produced that this acetyl-CoA can also undergo what we call lipogenesis we can use it for lipogenesis whereby in case in the body doesn't need energy and there is no need for ketone body formation we can it can undergo lipogenesis to form fatty acids or what we call triglycerides we can form tags which can be kept in adipose tissue so these are the major fats of or we can even use to produce or to synthesize the cholesterol it can be used for cholesterol synthesis so this is the fate of the product of acetyl coa and this one it applies on the, in the odd number in the odd numbers of fatty acids we see the end product not being acetyl coa and acetyl coa we shall tell you that is propionic acid so as we continue dear listeners this is medical sciences by mhumza naftar please subscribe if you haven't subscribed like the video and share your comments as we continue to the end as we continue this side we want to look at the accountability as we have summarized this we have seen steps involved the first one is the activation of free fatty acids followed by transfer of the acyl coa into the mitochondrial matrix and when it reaches in the mitochondrial matrix we have seen processes of beta oxidation whereby we have oxidation by fad hydration that is by addition of water then oxidation by nad and cleavage by a molecular system known as thiolase forming acetyl coa then the acyl coa formed undergoes this arrow represents a wrong chain a wrong hydrocarbon chain a wrong hydrocarbon chain so this arrow we, it goes back into the beta oxidation until we form the last compound as acetyl coa so this arrow represents a wrong chain of a hydrocarbon depending on the number of fatty acids in the hydrocarbon chain so let us look at the accountability how many atps are produced for example we want to use one more two of palmitic acid so if we use an example let us say that this fatty acid was palmitic acid palmitic palmitic acid palmitic acid and this is the 16 carbon sugar so this 16 carbon sugar we can calculate the number of cycles this product undergoes to form two acetyl coa until the end product is also acetyl coa so we can calculate the number of cycles because we know that these free fatty acids they have wrong chain of carbon is a wrong chain of hydrocarbon so we keep forming acetyl coa we keep forming acetyl coa until we finish all the carbons whereby the end product for even number is always acetyl coa so we can calculate the number of cycles which palmitic acid a 16 carbon sugar can undergo to complete beta oxidation and how do we calculate how can how do we calculate the number of cycles number of cycles you get it by getting the number of carbon number of carbon in the hydrocarbon chain you divide by 2 you subtract 1 Why are we subtracting one because the final acetyl coa produced does not undergo beta 
oxidation again. So the number of cycle we subtract by one. So since the number of carbon is 16, it is going to be 16 divided by two minus one, which is equal to eight minus one, and we get seven cycles. So a fatty acid like palmitic acid or palm palmitic acid, it undergoes what we call seven cycles of beta oxidation, of beta oxidation. And we want to see, after knowing the number of cycles, we can now calculate how many ATP are produced by each cycle. If I have this one cycle of beta oxidation, how many ATPs are produced by one cycle? So we want to look at the number of ATPs produced by one cycle. Number of ATPs produced by one cycle of beta oxidation. How many? That's what we want to look at. Number of ATPs produced by one cycle of beta oxidation. And we see on the accountability, we see here we produce the FAD. We see production of FAD. There is FAD H being produced. One FAD H. H2, this is one FAD H2. We see during oxidation, second oxidation, we saw also production of NAD H. There's also production of one NAD H. And we also see production of acetyl CoA. Production of one acetyl CoA. And, when, and this acetyl CoA produced, when it fed into Krebs cycle, it produces, it produces 12. This, so we see when this acetyl CoA is fed in the Krebs cycle and electron transport chain, we get 12 ATPs. When a NAD is shuttled in the electron transport chain, if this one is taken into electron transport chain, we see production of three ATPs. Many books give 2.5, then we round off to 3. Then we saw also FAD producing two ATPs in electron transport chain. The books, some textbooks of biochemistry, give 1.5 ATP. Then we can round off to 2. So we see that one cycle of, ATP, of beta oxidation, it produces 17 ATPs. 2 plus 3, that is 5, then plus 12, that is 17 ATPs. Let me put in another card. So we produce a total of 17 ATPs per cycle. That is per cycle. But we have seen... So we see one cycle of beta oxidation giving us 17 ATPs per cycle. But remember, in a 16 carbon sugar, the number of acetyl CoA produced it is eight. We produce eight acetyl CoA. It undergoes seven cycles, but the seventh cycle we form two. So in seven cycles we form eight acetyl CoA. So what is happening? We are going to get this twelve. After we have known that one ATP, that, uh, that one acetyl CoA, one acetyl CoA produces 12 ATPs, then what about eight acetyl CoA? We shall get 12 times eight, and we get one, we get 96 ATPs. 96. ATPs. And remember that after getting this accountability of eight acetyl CoA, but we already have also this total of five. This one, when I add them alone, I get five ATPs per cycle. And I can, so we know that from FAD and NAD, 
we get 5 ATPs per cycle. So what happens is that I will get 5 ATPs produced by one cycle from NAD and FAD. That is 5 ATPs produced per cycle from NAD and FAD times 7. And we know that 5 times 7 is equal to 30. Is equal to 35 ATPs. So I'm going to get 96. I add 35. And when I get 96 plus 35, I get 131 ATPs. So this is the total number of ATPs produced by a free fatty acid of permitylic acid. They produce 131. 131 ATPs. But during activation of free fatty acids in cytosol, we saw hydrolysis of AT, AMP, and pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate is an... So we see acyl synthetase cleaving off two molecules of phosphate group from ATP forming AMP. So these ones, we calculate them as two ATPs invested. So we see we invested two ATPs. Two ATPs were invested during activation of acetyl, during activation of free fatty acid to acyl CoA. So when we, in, we invested two ATPs to form pyrophosphate, we are going to get 131, 131 ATPs minus 2, and we are able to get 129 ATPs. So one molecule of permitylic acid produces 129. Net, this is, this is gross ATPs, then this is net ATPs produced by one molecule of permitylic acid. This one marks the end of beta oxidation. Thank you so much for listening. Always be, we are always at your service. For more information, you can always contact me on this WhatsApp number, which I'm always going to put on my page, which is 0779-376135 for more information. I remain Medical Sciences by Naftali Muhumza. Thank you so much.